welcome to the festival 2018, but more importantly, welcome to the Bricladi Masterclass. You are the lucky 250 people. 250, 260, I think we might have squeezed in a bit more at the end there. Um, you're lucky because not only do we get exclusive access to the very talented Mr. Adam Hannett's Masterclass, not only do we get six special drams, but you also don't have to wait in the queue for your festival bottling if you don't want to. <laughs> Woo! And it's only taken us 18 years to work out how to do that. <laughs> so the process is, if you collected a ticket, a raffle ticket on the way in, you're good, because that means a bottle's been held for you. If you didn't collect a raffle ticket on the way in, please see Joanne and Jenna on the way out. Joanne and jo Jenna, wherever they are. They'll give you a raffle ticket, and that means that you are secure for a festival bottle. We are filming as well, which is great. So. Our very talented communications team up in the high stand there. Well done, guys. <laughs> so not only are we recording, but we're also live streaming, hopefully, if the Isla Broadband continues to work okay. So uh, no camera bombing, no streaking halfway through the process, but uh, it will be going out to all your friends that didn't make the pilgrimage to Isla or weren't able to. So a little bit of housekeeping, please. Phones on silent. Preferably phones switched off or onto flight mode. But if you do keep it on, please keep it on silent. And uh, we're about to welcome to stage Adam Hannett. So Adam, whatever you are, please come to the stage. And uh, welcome to the Masterclass 2018. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much indeed. Um, as Douglas says, welcome to Warehouse 12. Um, do you know, standing here, this looks absolutely incredible. I wish you could all see what I can see, but we don't have time for you all to come up one by one and have a look. So believe me, this looks absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, as you know, if anyone has been here before, um, when I, you've watched me do this, I do need a prop. The six uh, drams do help as well. <clears throat> but I do want to, uh, to talk about a few things. You may have noticed uh, that uh, things are slightly different this year at Brooklady. Everything has gone a little bit grey. Uh, the reason for that, of course, the theme for today is about Port Charlotte. We are, we are relaunching, giving new life to Port Charlotte. I mean, this looks great, you know? Everything is, uh, is great. So we've spent a lot of time uh, making this distillery, you know, really, really... Uh, oh, uh, we're making it look really, really good. Um, you'll notice as you, as you look around the distillery, all the aqua, all the blue is gone, everything is gray as we, as we talk about Port Charlotte. Ironically, as you walk up to the warehouses here, Warehouse 12, they look fantastic, pristine and white they were the only things that we actually had in grey, and we've painted them white, so, <laughs> so there you go. So uh, today, very, very exciting, lots of really exciting things in the, in the glasses, lots of really exciting things for Port Charlotte, we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, but what a beautiful day. We're going to have a fantastic morning, we're going to have a great day in the sunshine. Again, we've arranged that specifically for you guys. Um, you know, one quick phone call, and it was all sorted, uh, but just for you. Uh, for those of you, when you came in, if you picked up the brochure, um, you can see there's some pretty sexy bottles you know, in these pictures here. Now, the Port Charlotte, as we, as we relaunch, we give it some new life, looks amazing. And if you think the bottles are good, wait till you taste the whiskey. It is superb, absolutely superb. So, <clears throat> the theme is Port Charlotte. Uh, but I want to do a little bit of, uh, have a little bit of chat with you all, you know, because it feels very familiar, it feels very nice to be, to be doing this. Um, uh, if you hear any thuds, just be careful, it's the warehouse boys taking position on the top. If Tony falls off the barrels, there'll be a bit of an earthquake, but we'll be all right. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to talk about is some of the things we've done since we were last gathered in this room. Um, 
There's been some exciting developments, some, some good things. Um, something that uh, you may or may not uh, know that we, we have done, something that was a, a first for Isla. Something very, very exciting, a first for me, something I'm, I'm very, very uh, proud to be a part of. Um, we distilled some rye whiskey, but not just any rye whiskey. This rye whiskey was grown on Isla, so very, very special. And I thought a little bit about maybe we should try that today, but uh, not yet. Maybe next year. We'll see. We'll see. So that was very exciting. A first for Isla. Superb. Um, for me, something else very, very exciting happened is we, I'd like to draw your attention to the, the third picture in the, in the row of pictures here. A young gentleman called, well, a young man, maybe not a gentleman, called Gordon McDougall, uh, who we promoted to be my assistant. So uh, really, really exciting for me, really exciting for Gordon, a young guy who's uh, been mashing and distilling and has now taken over the, the role of looking after the production uh, day to day. So that means that this year I can have a holiday which is really, really exciting for the first time in 12 years. Um, so I'm taking my, my beautiful wife, Amy, we're going to Port Haven for one night uh, <laughs> later on. So very, very exciting. It's going to be, it's going to be lovely. <laughs> she didn't clap when I told her that, but there we go. Um, <clears throat> so there's some cool things, some exciting things that we've, uh, we've been doing. Um, as you know, when we talk about Brooklady, we talk about uh, barley an awful lot. And something, again, very, very exciting, uh, we, we've acquired some land on the island. We will uh, a croft next door to the distillery, so we'll be able to grow some very, very cool things. We've got some exciting projects in the future, so that's very exciting for us as well. So we've been busy. We've done a lot of things since we were last year. Um, one of the other things I've been doing, thankfully, is spending a bit of time looking for some whiskey. Not just last minute, quick, we need six drams for the masterclass, but spending a long time looking at the stocks we have, and particularly with Port Charlotte and, and relaunching it. Um, so I spent a long time uh, looking for, for uh, different bits and pieces. So I, as I said, there's some really, really exciting drams. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned to you last year as we talk about these drams, and, and I know I did. I mentioned to you last year that Port Charlotte is the future. And as we think about and I talk about Port Charlotte and our campaign of We Are Isla and how, how everything we do is Isla-centric, as we talk about that and we talk about these drams, it would only be right to start the masterclass by drinking a Brooklady dram, okay? So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> the very first dram that I would like you to have a look at. Of course, uh, tasting mats are all numbered, so there should be a little bit of, or not too much confusion here. This should be pretty straightforward. Dram number one, <coughs> it's very, very special. Dram number one uh, is a Brooklady uh, that is from 1988. So, a little bit older than me. Um, not a few mamas, I've nearly got away with that one. Um, so, a 1988 Brooklady, um, which is very, very special. Very, very special. And, do you know, with this dram, the reason I, I kind of found this, the reason I looked at this is because uh, last year we released our rare cask series. And if you remember last year, if you were here, we tasted a, a fantastic whiskey that was from 1984 and 1986 combined. Well, we looked at those stocks and, and you know, there was very little left. They were absolutely exceptional, so we released them to the world. The last of those vintages have gone out into the world. And as I start looking at the other stocks that are, are similarly aged, I started thinking about you know, when, when these might be ready. And so this 1988 is just about there, just about there. For a Sunday morning at about 10 past 11, you want to have a nice, easy dram to get you started, don't you? <laughs> but remember, today is a marathon, not a sprint, OK? So a nice, easy dram to begin with. Honestly, when you smell this whiskey, when you nose that whiskey, is that not why we love whiskey? Is that not beautiful? The color. You can see I'm not nervous at all. There's no movement in the glass, no, no shaking whatsoever. <laughs> the color there is just wonderful. The nose is incredible. This is. Uh, matured in refill bourbon casks for about 30 years. 
So it's a very slow, gentle maturation. It's just absolutely wonderful. You almost don't need to drink that. Just nosing it is enough. And this to me is, you know, it's the old style Brocladi. And, and I was very lucky when I started working here, um, some of the releases we had, some of the gems in the warehouse, Jim was releasing 1970s, and, and there was a particular 1973 that was just beautiful. And this reminds me of that. This is the same kind of, kind of style in the whiskey. Absolutely beautiful. It's that old style Brocladi, just classic, nothing complicated, just easy drinking, beautiful whiskey. So what a way to start the day. Shall we begin the Brocladi Festival Day by having a little taste? Slide your everybody. The strength of this is 53%. So surprisingly high for a 30-year-old. But it's just beautiful. And you can feel that, that little bit of heat on the palate. You can feel that. But just when you taste that, just allow that to sit in your tongue for a while. Just allow that to, to, to just melt in. It absolutely melts in your mouth. That texture is incredible. Even with that little bit of heat there, it's absolutely wonderful. A beautiful, beautiful Brocladi whiskey. And there's another reason why this whiskey is special and why I would like to start the masterclass with this whiskey. Its pedigree is absolutely phenomenal. Its pedigree is, is tremendous, you know. It's, it's classic old style Brocladi. As I say, it's absolutely wonderful. Now, <clears throat> I always talk about whiskey being about people and, and having, you know, fitting whiskeys to certain occasions. And, there, there was something that's, that happened uh, at the beginning of this year that we, we, still, we, we, feel, very, um, we still feel very keenly. Um, at the beginning of the year, for those of you who uh, are involved with Brocladi, who communicate with Brocladi, you'll know that very, very uh, suddenly, very, very sadly, we lost our uh, head of communications, um, Carl Reavy, who passed away at the beginning of the year. Um, and I'm sure many of you will have, will have uh, communicated with Carl um, over the years. Um, so very, very sad. Uh, very, very sad. Carl was a, a, a wonderful man, um, loved life, very enthusiastic about everything. Uh, everything was very, it was very interesting to Carl. And, um, do you know, there's not too much more to say. A wonderful man and a fitting whiskey, and I think we should all toast to the memory of Carl. To Carl. So, <coughs> excuse me if I uh, <coughs> take a moment there. It's, uh, it's a very, very keenly felt uh, Carl's loss. Now, <coughs> a wonderful whiskey, a beautiful whiskey, something I hope we'll see soon in a, in a bottle, something very, very special. And for me, <coughs> the masterclass is about lifting the lid. As I say, it's about letting you see the things that go on behind the closed doors here in the warehouse. You know, the things that the, uh, the boys get up to, you know, the casks they roll, the things that we work on, that we, 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 um, we develop. And not all these things see the light of day. So I, I like to use the masterclass as a way to kind of show you some of the things that, that I'm thinking, some of the things that we have. Beautiful whiskey. Who knows how much that would be a bottle, but it would be expensive. But do you know what? I love the fact that we can draw it out the cask, we can share it with you all today and have a nice little moment where we're tasting some fantastic whiskey. Will we pay the duty? No, we haven't paid the duty on this. So as long as we're not broadcasting this live or... <laughs> <laughs> we should be okay, yeah. No, I can confirm all of this whiskey is duty paid. No one is breaking the law, <laughs> probably. Um, yes. Now, uh, so... The things that we, uh, that we are talking about here, the, the master class, the lifting the lid, the, the showing the things that are, are going on. Um, we're going to move on to the next dram, which is, which is um, the next dram is actually a sneak preview for you guys. No one else has tasted this. And that's what I tell everyone who's tasted it. No one else has tasted this. Uh, this is the face dram. So dram number two is, is a very, very special whiskey. It's uh, a 2001 Port Charlotte. Now, I have to be very, very careful about this because I, I continue to get this wrong. But this 
is the last of the first. <laughs> Not the first of the last, as I, as I keep calling it. The last of the first. And, and to be honest, <clears throat> as I say, today is about Port Charlotte, about rebirth, about relaunch, about giving Port Charlotte its, its rightful place, you know, because as, as, it's a stunning whiskey, you know, an absolutely stunning whiskey. So we're giving it a bit more attention, a bit more love. And, you know, over the years, you know, Port Charlotte to me is, is, is this 2001 vintage is still very inspirational. You know, I still look back and think about this distillery years and years ago and the way it is now, you know, and the, the efforts of Simon and the team and all the guys to, to really bring this back from the dead. And that's what happened. This distillery was resurrected. And 2001 is a date that is very, very important. If you should find any Brooklady staff uh, members' iPhone anywhere, the pin code, if it's not 1881, is 2001. Okay, so you'll be fine, you'll get into all the, the photos. Uh, particularly if you find Stuart's, we were taking some good photos this morning up here, but you know, that's, that's between us. That's between us, Stuart. Um, so 2001, it's inspirational. You know, when you look back and you think of where the history came from and the spirit. So this spirit is the last of the 2001 distillation. The last five casks. Over the last little while, we've been working with them, making sure that we, we blend them, with, they're, they're correct, they're ready. And we've, we've basically given away the very last of our 2001 Port Charlotte to relaunch Port Charlotte for the future. So for me, it felt quite symbolic. It felt like the right thing to do, to use that whiskey. Um, because five casks, let's face it, isn't going to go very far to try and spread that around the world. So we'll keep it on our island and we'll, we'll drink it with you here. Um, we called it, obviously, the first of the last. No, last of the first. Um, but there's another name on there, and you can see it on all the T-shirts today, the heretic. Or as sometimes we've been calling it, the heretic. But that's just, just how we pronounce it on island. The heretic, <clears throat> and I've made sure I wrote this down so I didn't get this wrong. Um, or did I? I didn't write it down. Hold on a second. I've got lost already in my, uh, my speech. A heretic, the definition of a heretic is a person holding an opinion at odds with what is generally accepted. Yeah? A person holding an opinion at odds with what is generally accepted. So in the whiskey world, what is generally accepted, we do not accept. For us, we talk about barley. We don't talk about just the stills, just the cask. We talk about everything that makes a whiskey, that brings it into being. Because for us, that is the story of a whiskey. The story of a whiskey isn't the, the local legend or the, the you know, local landmark or, or whatever it, you know, we, people may think up to, to market a whiskey. The story of our whiskey is the whiskey. We tell you everything. We're, we're transparent about what we do. You know, I mean, look, we're filming this thing. We're filming the whole thing. We're telling everybody everything about what we do. We invite you in and you see what we, uh, what we do. Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't quite know what that was. <clears throat> we'll blame Nick. Um, <clears throat> no wonder I keep losing my place. So the transparency. Last year we talked about transparency. This year we'll talk about transparency. You won't find the recipe in the book here. You won't find it online. But I'll tell you what's in here. I'll tell you what, uh, how we made this. So 2001 distillation of Port Charlotte. 40 ppm in the malt. Of course, it's Port Charlotte. There is three bourbon casks. There is one rum cask. And one bourbon cask that was then transferred into a premium uh, Bordeaux red wine. I can't give you the name of the particular chateau because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so this whiskey is, is beautifully balanced. When you know that, again, it's, this, this is just everything good about Port Charlotte. Lovely bit of peat, but it's light. You know, it's got that lovely freshness. It's very marine. You know, we talk about we are Isla. We mature all our whiskey on Isla. You get that marine influence in there, that kind of baked sand. That lovely kind of salty hint, a little savory note on the nose. Absolutely beautiful. Wonderful stuff. So it's carefully managed. We've been, it's been married. It's been blended for a little while in casks. Then we have, we have vatted it. This is the last of the 2001. 
And as I say, this is very symbolic whiskey to me. And so, what do we do with it? Do you save it forever? Do you, do you, do you, what do you do with this whiskey? You know, there's only five casks. How do we, how do we do this? Well, I'll tell you what we do. We look at those casks, we analyze them, we blend them, we marry them, we take care of them. And then we put it in a bottle and we say, to the future. And the future is Port Charlotte. Slide you. Mm. 55.9%. Nice and warming. But is that smoke in there not beautiful? The way that, that whiskey intertwines the flavor there, you've got, you've got so much cereal, you've got so much oak. The little bit of red wine cask maturation bringing the fruit. The bourbon bringing that, you know, and bourbon casks work so well with our spirit because our spirit is the light. The distillation now, our cuts. We're not interested in making a really, really peaty whiskey. This whiskey's got to have balance, you know. This has got to have that classic, clean style you have with Brocladi. So the distillation, the cuts are absolutely right. We're not trying to make as much phenol. We're not trying to get as much phenol as we can in that whiskey. And that gentleness comes through in this whiskey. It's absolutely beautiful. It's absolute class. And for me, symbolic and the perfect way to release Port Charlotte to the world again. Absolutely stunning. When I was doing the tasting notes on this, there was something as I, as I, was, I was writing and I was nosing, I was tasting, I found that after a couple of minutes, the finish is absolutely beautiful. The way that that peat smoke stays on your palate. You know, when you think about the texture, the oils in that whiskey, carrying those flavors, the way that that sits on your palate on the finish is absolutely beautiful. And believe me, it will stay there for a long time. Now, we can't sit here all day and savor that finish because there are three people watching this around the world uh, live. I think it might be four now. I don't know, Nick, is it four? <laughs> so we can't keep these poor people waiting. We've, they've got things to do the rest of the day, so we can't savor that flavor for too long. But honestly, as you sit there, as you let that sit on your palate, that finish is incredible. That smoke is gentle. And when you think of peat, when you think of Isla, you think of that iodine and that medicinal character, there's none of that here. It's clean, it's fresh, it's beautiful. The bourbon cast just works so well. That vanilla, that caramel, this coconut. Amazing, amazing notes in there. So for me, a beautiful, beautiful whiskey. A great way to launch Port Charlotte to the world. I told you, as I say, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times, I told you last year that Port Charlotte was the future. And... Um, I'll share a little story with you, if I, if I may. Um, I wanted to make sure that I actually had told you that, you know, that I wasn't going to stand up here and say, I told you so, you know, as we're tasting this stuff and thinking about Port Charlotte. And um, so I had to make a decision that I had to decide whether I was going to watch the recording of the masterclass from last year, which is something I swore I wouldn't do. Because let me tell you, standing up in front of all you lovely people, it's quite scary standing down there waiting to come on. So I thought, do you know what? I've done it. I've, I've done it. That's, I've done the masterclass. I don't have to relive it. I don't have to relive that again. You know, it's, it's hard. I'm just a quiet guy from Grunyet. I'm not. I'm not, a, I'm not, not a great public speaker. You know. So I swore to myself that I wouldn't watch the masterclass. And um, and I was thinking about this. You know, should I should I watch it? And um, and actually, my wife has pointed out to me on a few occasions that a great way to learn and improve would be to review your performance. And uh, there was... <laughs> <laughs> you see what happens when you go off script? Ah, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. I definitely didn't write that down here, definitely not. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Simon. Um, <laughs> Now, there was, a, there was a, a gentleman who came up to me after the masterclass last year, and he, uh, he may be here uh, again this year. I, 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 I didn't catch his name, but he came up to me afterwards, and he said, you know what? That masterclass was absolutely superb. The whiskey was amazing. And do um, and you know what? That was the best hour and a half of my life. Well, you know, something like that. It was, it was that, kind of, that kind of thing. He enjoyed it. You know. 
And, uh, and he said, you know, uh, it was fantastic. And, and he gave me his card and he said, um, you know, actually, you know, if you need any help, you know, next year, I'm, I'm a, a personal, like a public speaking coach, I can help. So maybe that, <laughs> <coughs> so that maybe throws a bit of doubt onto my previous statement about the best hour and a half of his life. But he was uh, a very, very kind gentleman. And, he did, and I actually, I you know, I would have taken him up on it, but I lost his card. It was, it was a very, very kind offer. Um, <laughs> Um, so I, I, I lost his card, uh, couldn't take him up on the offer, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to take my wife's advice, I'm going to watch the master class back, and uh, I'm going to look at it, and I thought, well, there's two things, I can then see if I actually did tell you that Port Charlotte is the future. And can you believe this, you know, as I say, I, I've stood there, I've, I've done it, but as Douglas, as I watch the repeat of the master class, and I, and I see Douglas stand on stage, and bearing in mind, this is, this is at half past eight, in the sample room at night, a couple of nights ago, as I'm, as I'm thinking about this speech. So my little, my little safe space in the distillery, the, the sample room, no one's gonna harm me, no one else is there, and I, my heart is going like this. My legs go to jelly, just as Douglas is, is, is doing his, uh, his speech, and I'm reliving all of these things that happened, uh, happened last year. And I'm thinking, but I've done it. Why am I getting so nervous about this? What is going on? Anyway. Douglas jumps off the stage, I jump on stage. Can you believe it was 38 minutes and 42 seconds I had to sit there and watch myself, heart going like this. I nearly had a heart attack. I nearly didn't make today. I could have nearly died uh, watching, this, uh, watching this back. But I did tell you, and for those of you who don't believe me, should you feel like you can't sleep one night and you want to watch the Masterclass 2017, at 38 minutes and 42 seconds in, I say that Port Charlotte is the future. And here we are today, experiencing <laughs> it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> that was very kind. Um, so we're going to move on to our next dram. Um, our next dram again is a Port Charlotte. And this is again a little premiere. Um, you'll notice on these, uh, these wonderful brochures that the number, there's a lovely yellow number on the front of a 10. So the whiskey we are going to taste is going to be our new core Port Charlotte product, which will be a 10-year-old Port Charlotte. And I think that's a really, really lovely thing. Now, we've always talked about, and before you say it, I'll say it, but we've always talked about age is not the most important factor in maturing a whiskey, and it isn't. But for us to be able to communicate what we do, for us to be able to talk about what we do, to kick off with a 10-year-old Port Charlotte is a wonderful thing. And the reason why we do that is really, really simple. As I was you know, looking at the whiskey, and, and the great thing about this company, the, the wonderful thing about this distillery and this company is that you know, Simon, Douglas, they don't make decisions about what the whiskey is and tell me what I have to make. The great thing is they say, we're going to relaunch Port Charlotte. How are we going to do it? What whiskey do we have? You tell us. So the whiskey is telling us when it's ready. We're not doing it the other way around. So we could very easily have carried on with a Port Charlotte Scottish barley, the multi-vintage cuvee, which, to be honest, is an absolutely superb dram. It's the one you find, you know, if you've got a bottle of that at home, that Friday night you come home from work, you want to relax, have a little dram, that's the one you go for. It's just absolutely stunning, you know? A beautiful, beautiful dram. This is the same. But do you know, as I look through the stocks, I look at the whiskey, and we're talking about what's the best flavor. We find that when you have whiskey that is sitting that little bit longer in the casks, still multi-vintage, a little bit of all the stuff in there, all we're doing here is stating that the youngest age is always 10 in this whiskey. So, are you excited that you, 250 people, are going to be the very first people to taste this whiskey? Yeah? You should be excited. You should be excited. This is the beginning, okay? So, let's have a little nose. Now, I'm going to have to be, uh, do, do some acting here because we, when we were pouring the drams, some of the boys were, were quite heavy-handed and pouring, so some of you got pretty decent drams. I've actually got apple juice in here, so I'm just going to have to use my imagination. <coughs> Port Charlotte 10, 
It's absolutely beautiful. That note again, it's marine. It's, it's got that lovely marine note. The bourbon casks in there just absolutely give it life. That vanilla, that smoke, again, it's just so beautifully, it's like a, it's like a Celtic knot. You know, you've got all these different, different threads coming together. It's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely wonderful whiskey. This is going to be bottled at 50% alcohol. So relatively strong. So again, you can take a, a, a little splash of water in there, but tasting it without. Mm. Again, for a Sunday morning dram, that is absolutely spot on. Absolutely wonderful. The presence on the palate this whiskey has is wonderful. That, that lovely sweet vibrancy you get as it stays on the palate, that sweetness going further and further back on your palate, absolutely wonderful. It's hard, you know, to, to stand here and talk about the taste notes when, when Daniel is pointing his camera at me. <laughs> it's hard not to be distracted. But, you know, that, that lovely marine note, and, and, you know, all the things that we, we talk about, and all the things, you know, the transparency, all the things about the provenance, the authenticity of a whiskey, the we are Isla, you know, we're an Isla single malt, all of this stuff, it's done for a reason. It's not about marketing. It's not about talking a load of bullshit to try and sell whiskey. We, we mature all our whiskey on Isla so that we get that note when you smell that, that marine note. You know, you think if you stand out the front of the distillery and you smell that amazing salty sea breeze coming in, the casks that are sitting right here, all our casks are maturing on Isla, right with this, this breeze. They are breathing the same air that you would breathe as you stand by that water. So that is going to have an effect on this whiskey. Now, how do you quantify that? I don't know. Except to say that I can taste it and I know that it has an effect. And so that's why we do it. It's the right thing to do. That is why we mature our whiskey on Isla. Now, with the new Port Charlotte range, we're going to be quite flexi flexible. The spirit, as I was tasting all of these, uh, all of these whiskies, all of these Port Charlottes, the spirit, the one thing I noticed is that it's incredibly versatile. So the makeup on this, and again, to talk about transparency and to, to lift the lid, this whiskey is um, matured in a mixture of fresh and second fill bourbon barrels, and a percentage of second fill wine cask, so European oak, French oak in there predominantly. And the second fills of those wine casks, they are, they're giving us a nice amount of oak, but not too much wine. The second fill, so the wine has been, uh, the, or the remnants from the wine have been drawn out in the previous filling. So you get a lovely balance, and everything just feels just right with that balance of, uh, of casks. But what I noticed is that when we, we look around the warehouse, even as you look around the warehouse here, the amount of different types of casks we have, the amount of different types of spirit we have, we fill Port Charlotte into a lot of different types of casks over the years. And it works with all of them. And so what we will do <clears throat> as we go forward is we will bring out finite releases of whiskey that have spent time in different types of casks. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they are just now. I'm sure we, we already have, maybe in the brochure, some of the, the information on these future releases. And it would be great if we were, again, going to be the first people to taste these today, you know, to taste these new releases, but that doesn't really show a lot of imagination. So, as I was looking at these casts and going through the stocks of Port Charlotte, I started to pick up some really interesting casts, some really, really standout ones. And it started getting me thinking, over the years, we have Brooklady Black Art. And it's, uh, I think we're on the, the sixth release, the sixth edition of Black Art has just been released. And that style, that way of picking up these amazing casks and blending them and being, being very, very secretive about doing things that are just purely about creating the very best whiskey with the very best casks. A few years ago, um, we, well, at the masterclass, we tasted an OBA, some of you may remember. Um, so it seemed only right, as I was finding these casks, that we would stand here today and we would taste a PCBA, okay? So dram number four isn't a new release. It isn't something we're going to release. It's just a bit of fun for the day because you guys are in here with us in the warehouse. 
So, <clears throat> dram number four is about versatility of spirit, it's about casks, it's a Port Charlotte black art. I can't tell you much about it because it's black art. But I can't tell you what casks I use. This sample was drawn from seven different types of casks. Okay? Now that is more information than I would normally tell people. The youngest whiskey is from 2005. And I've added a little splash of water so that it is 52.1% alcohol. The color is absolutely stunning. Look at that color. Look at the way those legs, get that little swirl around the glass and watch the way the legs just come down the glass. Absolutely beautiful. Woman knows this. There's not a lot of smoke. It's a lot of fruit, kind of leather, dried fruit. Wonderful, wonderful notes. As we think about these flavors, we think about Port Charlotte, we think about these casks. I must admit, I take a great satisfaction in being the only person in this room who knows how this was created. I take a lot of satisfaction in that. It's very, very good. <clears throat> Should we have a taste? Good. Uh, it's good to see, actually, that um, <clears throat> for those of you who've been here before and you know how I work, I very, very rarely invite people to have a dram. Because if, if people wait <clears throat> for me to say, well, let's taste this whiskey, they'll be waiting a long time, okay? So you know the form, you know the script. Dive in. It's lounging. <clears throat> Does that not take your breath away? Is that not a beautiful, complex, rich, that soft whiskey, that texture again is just melt in the mouth. Stunning, stunning whiskey. And the great thing is, that changes. All the time that's on your palate, that's changing, that's developing. There's amazing, there's lots of orange, kind of citrus fruit coming through now. The finish just keeps going and going, and then you start to get the peat. So this balance you've got from these incredible casks, the notes you're getting there, there's just, just absolutely everything. It's so, so complex. It actually needs a little splash more water. <clears throat> and again, you see the way the oils react when you, when you add a splash of water in there. Absolutely incredible. Oh. Opens it up beautifully. That little bit of water brings through those dried fruit a little bit more, a little bit more of that, that leather comes through. The smoke is really, really wonderful. It's that kind of heather. The smoke, again, is dry. It's, it's like a, a heather, like a peat ember. Not medicinal, not oily, just clean, fresh. Do you know what? The lovely thing about this is once these glasses are empty, there is no more. There is no more Port Charlotte Blackheart. It's a wonderful thing. But of course, I can't stand here and talk too much about this whiskey because I'll, I'll end up giving the game away. You know, I'll end up telling you things about it. So I had to think of some other things to talk about. So again, hopefully you'll indulge me in a little, little story. Um, this one's a little bit more about my, my lack of technology, um, my, my uncomfortableness with, with technology. And Daniel is smiling because he, he knows. He fixes my computer. These guys, these guys know what happens. Um, one of the great joys of my job, one of the really you know, privileges of my job is that uh, every now and again, uh, I am allowed to leave the distillery, I'm allowed to travel and, and talk to people around the world. And <clears throat> last year, I was lucky enough to go to the Far East. I was in uh, Taiwan and, uh, and China. And uh, it was a fantastic trip, really, really, absolutely wonderful, you know, uh, to see a completely different culture and to see how whiskey is, is developing and, and being drunk in, uh, in China. Um, and we have a guy, we're very, very lucky that I was, you know, again, I'm a guy from Grunyet on Isla. I'm not very street smart. So to send me to Shanghai, a city of 25 million people, is a bit of a risk, to be honest. Even if, if I even make it there, never mind what happens when I am there. Um, so we're really lucky that uh, at that time, based out in, the, in Taiwan, uh, was a lovely guy called Murray Campbell, who works with this story for a long time. I don't know if anybody knows Murray. Um, Murray's uh, got a lovely connection to the, to the distillery. Uh, Murray's from Oban. Or uh, is anyone from America in today? Yeah? 
uh, Oban. <laughs> <laughs> Murray's from Oban. Um, sorry, I do. I apologise. Um, <clears throat> Murray's from Oban, and his uh, Murray's uncle is Duncan McGilvery, uh, who again, very very famous man, the, the previous manager of uh, of the distillery. Um, and Murray's got a great story. He's about the same age as me. He actually looks very, very similar to me, uh, which is quite confusing when you're out in China. And, you know, we had a, a few laughs about that. Um, but, uh, but Murray's a lovely guy. He was the same age. And when, when Murray left school, he a uh, really interesting story. He went out to America on a, on a football and a soccer scholarship. And he had a great time, but I don't, he didn't really, didn't really gel for him, didn't really work, so he, he didn't know what to do next. His next move, naturally, from a boy for Oban, who goes to America, it doesn't work out, was to move to Shanghai. You know, so from a, a town of maybe a few thousand people to a city of 25 million people, you know, but it worked for him. Uh, Murray immersed himself in the, in the culture, in the language, he learned Mandarin uh, very, very quickly. He actually speaks it better than he speaks English, uh, which is true, actually, not a joke. <coughs> but Murray's, Murray's a great guy, he's very, very, uh, he's very, very meticulous about what he does. Um, and as I was, I was out there, we were traveling around together, I noticed that quite often uh, Murray would have his, uh, his iPhone with him. And he would use the little app for notes, so he would take a lot of notes. And I started to realize that as, as we were doing dinners and we were, we were communicating to people about Brooklady and doing tastings, that uh, in China, or in Taiwan, it's customary to, to toast everybody. You, know, you, you toast and you drink, you drink a lot, you know? So Murray would be taking these notes so that he didn't forget things, so he remembered, because of course working out there, working for Brooklady, working for Remy Quantro, he would have to remember a lot of people and, and learn a lot, you know, so he would take all these notes. I thought, that's really clever, because I am constantly thinking of things and then forgetting them, you know, and so I'm going to start doing that. So on my trip in China, my, my trip around Shanghai and Beijing, I started doing the same thing. And we had some really, really great times, you know, some really, really interesting um, some, some really interesting events. Um, and you know, when I, when, I, when I finished my trip and I was on the way home, um, you know, we got back to, uh, to Isla and you know, thinking about all the, the things that we've been up to and the, the places we've been and the people we met, I started looking through some of the notes that, uh, that I had and there were some great things. You know, I there was a, a lovely guy I met called Gordon who, uh, who had a bar called Pete. So I was going to send him some peat. So I remembered that. So it was really good. There was a couple other guys I was going to send cask ends to or jackets or bits and pieces. Just nice guys we'd met who'd been doing great things with us for, uh, for a while and supporting us. So it was nice to be able to remember that because I would have forgotten. You know? And uh, there was a couple of notes, and I'll, I'll share them with you, that, that kind of made me kind of a bit puzzled. And one of which was just, the first one was just two words. It was Armageddon toast. I was looking at it, I can't. I didn't even eat any toast when I was there. Never mind any kind of world-ending toast. No idea. <clears throat> and the other one was, was a great one, which, which if we talk about Murray, it was, uh, it was just a, a quick note that said, um, Santa and the Easter Bunny. So, an interesting concept uh, in, uh, in China. But uh, with, with the, the Santa and the Easter Bunny, I remember that one, that was okay. So, the story there, as the interesting note was that, uh, one day, one of our engagements was to go into the Remy Quantro office in Shanghai, uh, where I would sign bottles and, and take pictures with, with the staff. You know, and it wasn't a, a consumer event, and it was really weird. And I was saying to Murray, like, "This is this is I'm just I'm just a guy who makes whiskey." You know, usually when you travel and you go to these places, you know, everyone's kind of pleased to see you, but you know, the staff don't usually want to you know take selfies and have you sign photos and, and all this kind of thing. And Murray said, "Oh, do you know, you know, just think about it. You know, from from these people in, in Shanghai." Now, you're from the other side of the world, and you make this amazing whiskey, and you know, you're, 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 you're like Santa or the Easter Bunny to these guys. <laughs> what? <laughs> Apart from the fact I'm a real person, you know, I don't just come out here once a year and just like this to do a master class. <laughs> so there was a, a funny thing, but uh, when we, we, reviewed the, uh, we reviewed the trip, and I asked Murray, because the Armageddon toast, I, I, I have no idea what that means. And, uh, and I asked Murray about it and the Armageddon toast, and he reminded me that um, at the end of our trip, we had a, an event. Uh, at the end of the trip, we, we did a, an event called Whiskey L in, uh, in China. And at the end, there was a really big dinner, fantastic dinner. And at our table, 
Uh, a lo one of the lovely things about China, you know, when they have a, a sit around a table and they have food, they have drink, it's a circular table so that everyone is included in the conversation. It's, it's lovely little things like that that were, were fantastic about the trip. And at our table, um, there was 10 seats for, for the Remy Contra group there, and so we were all, um, all seated. And in the middle was a, a Lazy Susan. Don't hear that name very often, do you? Or that word very often. A Lazy Susan, and on that Lazy Susan were 11 bottles of whiskey. So we weren't drinking wine, we weren't drinking water, there was, there was 11 bottles of whiskey for 10 people. <laughs> <coughs> and of those 11 bottles, seven of them, oh sorry, eight of them were cask strength whiskies. One of them was Octomo 7.3, which, which we actually, uh, we were given an award for. Um, and so this, this night, this, this evening, when you look at it, it was only going to go one way. <laughs> now, I had a plane to catch. I did not want to miss coming home to my family. So I was very, very restrained. Um, and this will give you a little clue to the, 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 the drinking culture in China, which is, uh, which is, is quite, uh, quite interesting. In the, in the conference room, or in the, in the room that was set up for, the, uh, for the, the dinner, outside, you know, when you walk along the corridor and you walk off to the bathrooms, there was a room off to the side that was full of wheelchairs. And Murray had told me about this, that those wheelchairs were to escort people out after the event. <coughs> so I was starting to feel a bit nervous. Am I going to make the plane home? And... <coughs> And the Armageddon toast, it wasn't bread that was toasted. The Armageddon toast was, was a gentleman that, whose face will be forever etched in my brain, <clears throat> who came up and said to us, as the night started to get on, as we were toasting, to Armageddon. <laughs> this was the end of the world for him. This was the end of the world. This was the night to end all nights. And you know what? At that point, I said, I've got to go but I still took a note, I still took a note of that. And so with that, there is a word of warning for you all today. There will be no Armageddon toast today. We will behave ourselves, <clears throat> we will not get too excited, and when we toast, we do not have to camp by. We just have a little sip, we drink responsibly, we enjoy our whiskey. Okay. So. <clears throat> Hopefully that's distracted you enough from the, the black art. Hopefully you've been enjoying that while we've uh, been talking. And the, uh, the next whiskey we will taste, dram number five. Um, in fact, just, just one more thing, I just noticed I had another little note there. One of the great things about Murray, um, and I don't think he'll mind me saying this, and he's not here, is he? I should, have, should have probably have checked before I said this. But one of the, the things that Murray, he's, he's a genuinely lovely, lovely man. And, you know, very easy to take, make fun of, but that's just kind of what we do. Um, <laughs> Murray uh, made a big impression ac across the Far East, and so everywhere we went, uh, the, you know, all the events, people would say to me, we're really, really sad about Murray leaving. And I would say, I know, we're really, really sad about him coming home. Um, <laughs> I know how you feel. And so Murray has moved back to Glasgow now. He's, uh, he's uh, learning a bit more about the business uh, in Glasgow, which is good. Um, but yeah, I, do, I just want to share that with you. Because, and if you see Murray today, he looks quite similar to me, you know, a little, little beard. Uh, just do tell him that we're all very, very sad that he's home as well, okay? So <laughs> do that for me. So, dram number five. <clears throat> dram number five, um, I kind of touched on it before, but when you think about the, the type of, we look around the warehouses here, the type of whiskey we make, the casks we have, the options of making whiskey are quite incredible. You know, when we're going to the level of, uh, you know, single farm uh, releases, when we have barley from specific places, we have, I think at the last count, just shy of 300 different cast types maturing in these warehouses. There are about 15 different spirit types, Six, excuse me, 16 if you include rye whiskey. The options that we have in these warehouses are quite incredible. So, last year, <clears throat> Last year, one of the whiskies we tasted, one of the seven, was a, a combination, it was a mixture of Brocladi, uh, Port Charlotte, and Octomore. And I kind of wanted to do the same thing again. You know, I, I, um, 
I enjoyed last year's whiskey, but it got me thinking, you know, that's just one hit at it. You know, of all the options we have, we can do this again. So let's, let's go again, let's have another look at it. So this whiskey is, uh, is again something that we won't release, it's just for today. Um, I don't know what we call it. Um, BPO was in the labels in the bottles. Um, don't think that name will stick, but it keeps me uh, from getting the glasses mixed up. So it's about creativity. Um, what can you do when you've got so many options, when you look at all the cast, when you think of all that spirit? And so for me, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to pick up on that idea and um, really kind of go for something that has just got power, it's got presence, it's got some really, really good notes, and using uh, Buchladi, Port Charlotte, and Octomore as a combination. After that, anything goes. So with this whiskey, again, you look at the color there, look at that lovely, lovely depth of color. It's absolutely wonderful. Give that a little nose. The, uh, the strength is about 54% here. Give that a little nose. A little bit of heat there, but there's, there's a lot of depth. There's some really, really good notes there. This whiskey, <coughs> the base, I'll tell you how this whiskey is constructed. The base of this is some Brofladi spirit from 1990 that is matured in Pedro Jimenez sherry butts for a little while for quite a long time in those sherry butts. So when you think about that kind of cask, you think about the flavors you're gonna be getting, you start to pick them up, you start to get that, that sherry style, that Pedro Henry, that sweetness, that sticky grape kind of sweetness. The next whiskey, and because this is Port Charlotte, it is the biggest proportion of whiskey, uh, it is about half of the whiskey in here, is a Port Charlotte from 2003, from an Oloroso sherry cask. And again, when you think about that type of cask, you think about that whiskey, you, you, you start to pick up on the peat, that peat's coming through more. You start to get, uh, and particularly on the taste, when you, when you taste this, the sweetness from the PX, that richness from the PX, and that kind of savory kind of style, that saltiness coming through with the Oloroso, really, really works together really, really well. And then the last part, the last quarter of this whiskey is something really, really unique. It is a 2002 Octomore that has spent 16 years in a Chateau Ikem wine cask, or Sauterne, for those of us who are, you know, not going to talk about that. So a Sauterne cask that is absolutely premium. So when we think about that again, that richness in the oak, that's going to bring a little bit of dryness. So again, starts to work again with that PX. So let's have a little taste. Lots and lots of murmuring, lots and lots of murmuring. That's very, very good. Tell me, how do you think that drama is? Yeah. It was a Sauterne cask. Sauterne. So, does that whiskey not have incredible power? Does that not have incredible presence? I mentioned before, but the, a few nights ago when I was, I was tasting this whiskey, so for a bit of peace and quiet, just to like get a bit of headspace of an evening, I would come down to the distillery, I would spend a bit of time in the sample room tasting this. I kid you not, when I woke up the next morning, I could still taste this on my palate. It was incredible. The power in there, that, that lovely kind of roundness on that whiskey, is absolutely incredible. So again, this whiskey, for me, is about that incredible power that whiskey has. When you taste it, it just feels right. Something just clicks with this whiskey. And as I mentioned before, for this, this lineup, these six whiskeys that we are tasting, I was very, very tempted for dram number five to be really, really exciting. The, the rye whiskey that we made in December last year, it would only been about five months old, you know, but it's doing really, really well. Wouldn't have that been an incredible whiskey like, to, to, to learn about, to know about, to taste for the first time, to see what that rye grown on Isla would taste like? You know, that amazing thing. You know, the, the rye thing for us was, was incredible. We did it because we felt we could, we, we should, let's try it, what's the worst that can happen? That spirit of adventure, of, of creativity. Technically, it's really, really interesting. And you know, the process of making single malt that we do at Brooklady and how we use our 
1881 equipment to make rye whiskey. You know, th there's so much we could talk about, the technical details. And this is the amazing thing about whiskey, that there is so much for us. You know, you guys have come a long way. You have, you've traveled, you've come all the way here, you're sitting and you've, you've been really, really good and patient and listened to me talking for a long time. No one's got up, no one's thrown anything at me yet. Um, so Tony, you know, it hasn't happened yet. No one's thrown anything yet. No, no, no. So this whiskey, it is beautiful. And as I say, there's so much for us to talk about and think about with whiskey and get excited about and get geeky about with whiskey. But do you know what? At the end of the day, this is a stunning, stunning dram. And for me, if I ever have the choice of something that is technical and interesting, and don't get me wrong, that floats my boat, or something like this, which is just beautiful, it's going to be this every time, the head or the heart. This is the heart. This is the experimentation. This is the options that we give ourselves as whiskey makers to work with. And this is why you are tasting this whiskey today. Slanger. <coughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the end. We are approaching the end. The last whiskey that we are going to taste, before you pick up the glass, put your glasses back down, Christy, I'm watching you. Put your glasses back down. I need, to, I need to give you a bit of a warning for this whiskey. I mentioned this before. Today is a marathon, not a sprint, okay? <laughs> it's going to be hot out there. You need to remember to drink lots of water with your whiskey. And as I think about that, you know, I start to think, what am I doing giving you this whiskey? This whiskey is... is, is it's dangerous. It's perilous whiskey. You may have seen this before. You probably haven't seen this before, but not at this age. This is an Octomore, and because we couldn't do a masterclass, so it was all about Port Charlotte, we couldn't do a masterclass without having some Octomore in there. And that, the little bit that's in number five is not enough. So this Octomore, <clears throat> was distilled in 2007, and then it was distilled again, and then again. So this is quadruple distilled Octomore at 10 years old. Now, a few years ago, I think in 2014, uh, Jim released a, a, a discovery, the quadruple distilled Octomore uh, as the festival bottle. Now, this is slightly different. That was from a sherry butt. This is from a, a, a marriage of uh, first fill bourbon casks, and reef salt uh, wine casks. And it's something that we've, we've put together you know, a few months ago and uh, is sitting in the casks. But being quadruple distilled, it's, it's quite perilous. As I say, it's quite dangerous whiskey. Um, when this whiskey was made, and Jim used to tell this story, when this whiskey was made, it was the first time, you know, making this quadruple distilled whiskey. The reason it was done was, it was to see what would happen. You know, how, what happens if you quadruple distilled Octomo? Where does the peak go in the distillation? What do you get? So <clears throat> Jim would tell this, this great story with, about uh, Neil McTaggart, who retired a good few years ago, but was uh, stillman here since the early 60s. So Neil knew the stills like nobody else. You know, Neil was just, just absolutely incredible as a, as a stillman. And as Jim and Neil were distilling this quadruple distilled Octomo, so they, they take their spirits, they then distill it for a third time. They then take that spirit and then they distill it for a fourth time so the alcohol strength is getting higher and higher. As the, st the, the, the faint started to come through at the beginning, as the, as the spirit started to come through, Jim was, was at the safe with Neil and they were, they were nosing, they were tasting. And Jim was saying to Neil, Neil, I'm a bit worried about this. The strength is very high. The, the hydrometers in the safe couldn't give a reading. They were too low. This was about 89% alcohol coming through. <laughs> so Jim would said to Neil, <clears throat> right Neil, this is it, it's happening now, okay? Neil, 
anything can happen. We need, we need fire extinguishers. Get the fire extinguishers, Neil. <laughs> so Neil ran away, he got the fire extinguishers, and he came back with the fire extinguishers. And they stood there at the safe, and they're, they're coming through. And Neil, I need you with me, Neil. You're right with me, Neil. And Neil's got the fire extinguishers like this. I'm right with you, Jim. I'm right behind you, Jim. Don't worry, Jim. I'm right with you. But it was fine. It was fine. Nothing exploded. And um, <clears throat> the result, 10 years later, is a whiskey that is now sitting at 70%. Okay? <laughs> and, you know, uh, for the last few weeks, as I've been thinking about this whiskey and, and how we... What should we do for our lineup? I didn't really think too much about this, did I? You know, I, th that's why I'm saying this is a marathon, not a sprint, okay? You don't have to finish your dram. <clears throat> it's a very, very strong whiskey. So the warning and, and the inspiration for this whiskey, the inspiration for this whiskey was, uh, was from a, a book by a guy called Martin Martin. Some of you may have read this as he traveled the, uh, traveled the country. In 1695, Martin Martin uh, discovered a whiskey called Tristaric, which was triple distilled, and a whiskey called Ushkeber Bor, which was perilous whiskey. This. And when he wrote about it, <clears throat> he wrote, at first taste, it affects all members of the body. Now, oh, gentlemen, <clears throat> this will not give you special powers. Arms and legs, okay, that's what we're thinking here. Two spoonfuls of this liquor is a sufficient dose, and if any man exceeds this, it would presently stop his breath and endanger his life. Tony, you're a first aider. Get down here. <laughs> All joking aside, it's a very, very strong whiskey. But it is a beautiful whiskey. And this spirit of adventure and exploration in distillation, to have a quadruple distilled whiskey, mature that for 10 years, this is just a step on the journey to taste. So let's have a little nose. Now, remember this is Octomore the most heavily peated spirit in the world. There is no peat. It's all gone. Absolutely gone. The process of distillation, of purification, has stripped the phenols from this. There is no phenol left now, after 10 years maturation. It is so light. It is so delicate, this whiskey. This is not for drinking, for necking. This is for sipping gently, appreciating this flavor. Let's have a little taste. Oh. What do you think? Yeah? <clears throat> So okay, you can keep clapping. I think we've got another five minutes for the broadcast end, so that's a great end to it. No, this, this, um, this spirit is just incredible. It's, a, it's unique, absolutely unique, for a 10-year-old quadruple distilled Octomore. Just think about that. That's unique. That's, that's incredible. But the flavor, it's not about, again, that, that, how special or how rare it is. It's about that flavor. When you think about that amazing sweetness, that fruit, that vanilla, that coconut that's coming through there, that balance in that whiskey, absolutely incredible. Now, as I mentioned, <clears throat> the peat smoke is gone. It's faded, it's gone. A little bit like myself at this point in time. I am fading, I am wilting, I've given you everything I've got. So I would like to say, <clears throat> A heartfelt thank you very, very much for coming to the Masterclass this year for our Fesh 2018. It has been 
a huge pleasure for me to stand and talk about all these amazing whiskies and to be at the beginning of this journey with Port Charlotte and the amazing things, the amazing whiskies we're going to discover over the next few years. And I would like to say to you all that should you see people wearing these t-shirts, the heretic, as we say, should you see these people, they're all going to work really, really hard today to make sure that you have a great day. Um, we all want you to have a, a great day. We're going to have a great day. Let's do it together. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. That's, that's enough, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Slange of iron, everybody. <laughs>